Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Factorio Town. So in the previous episode we set up the ammo production in the town of Forton and uh, started working on our automatic ammo delivery system, which at the moment is just uh, on a small portion of the, uh, the west wall of Forton, but hopefully we'll be able to expand it to the rest of the town and also to all the other towns as well uh, and get a proper automatic system uh, maintained by the trains and such. The only issue at the moment is that we don't really have the, uh, the production rate for it. We've got uh, four copper furnaces and four steel furnaces running, uh, which is apparently enough to keep uh, two of the ammo assemblers going. Well, that's plenty to keep us uh, supplied for dealing with biter bases and making sure that all the turrets are uh, fully equipped. If we wanted to actually get the, um, the ammo being delivered to all the other towns, we'd need quite a bit uh, in reserve just to sort of fill out all the, the new belts and things that we'd end up having. So uh, for the moment, we'll just uh, do a little bit of expansion work on here. I'm just going to make sure the... Uh, the full west wall is covered, but at the moment there is a miner in the way that we can... We, we could move, but it's sort of... I'm, I'm leaving it where it is to mine away the um, uh, the copper that's uh, in the way as quick as possible. We could put a miner uh, just beyond that point and it would still be able to mine all the stuff, but I would prefer to have uh, a little bit more clearance for sort of extra room uh, if we can manage it. And at the moment there's no particular urgency to... Uh, expand the thing anyway, but I, I did have to steal some iron from the uh, the steel furnaces to actually uh, get some more belts and uh, and burner inserters made because I've completely run out and I'm gonna have to go back to the uh, uh, the main base to get some more uh, pretty soon. But before we do that, we will deal with some of the biters that are around because they are the the reason that we can't have, uh, or at least uh, we won't have more than uh, the production we've got right now. There are so many biter bases that are uh, very close to. Uh, Fortin and well within its pollution range that I really want, don't want to be putting any more pollution out there uh, than I already am. So I'll keep myself supplied uh, and sort of slowly uh, build up a, like a chest full of it, but um, we want to be uh, pushing the biters back or doing something about the pollution before we actually get to uh, um, a, a proper high speed like four assembler, eight assembler sort of situation, which is what I'm hoping to get to eventually. Um, and it sort of comes down to a question of how we ultimately want to deal with the biters. Do we want to continue pushing them back and keeping them outside of the pollution range? Or do we want to give up on that plan and just start um, just start letting them attack uh, and sort of weathering them instead and just uh, setting up more defences uh, in our towns? Anyway, I got a bit of flooring done. I've used up all the remaining concrete I have. And I tried to make it look nice at the end, but we ended up with like an odd number or an even number where we needed an odd number. So it's it's gone slightly awkward, but that's fine. I'll put in a little bit more in the way of a stone brick to make the, the crossovers of the track look a little bit nicer. And we do also need to do a bit of a change on the on the rails, because I've actually set up the flooring wrong. I'd forgotten what my design was for uh, the rail stations. And so I've ended up having concrete underneath the rails uh, in between the platforms, which isn't what's supposed to happen. Um, and I was looking at it before and thinking something didn't seem to be quite right with it, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Uh, and it's only later on in the episode that I uh, I... Uh, visit a town with uh, it properly set up and realize what I've done wrong. So at some point in the next episode, when we come back to Fortin, we will uh, fix that. But uh, as soon as we've uh, dealt with a couple more biters here, we'll go back to the main base and uh, deal with some issues over there. So once again, grabbing some iron from the steel furnaces, we need a little bit more to make all of the, of, uh, the turrets that we'll need, because um, I ended up using up some to uh, fill in the wall, because I was sort of setting up the standardized ammo delivery system and it sort of works best when there are um, sort of when there's a spacing of three squares between each turret which is quite dense and that's good because it means that uh, sort of we can go that dense and still have our standard system um, and I thought I'd go for that because uh, the west wall is probably going to be attacked the most alongside the uh, the north wall but at the moment the north wall is still being attacked uh, in a weird way because we have that little extra compound um, on top that's sort of attracting all the bite retention instead and that one turret that's there is doing a really good job. I'm very proud of it. Um, though there are some biters that are going past it as well. You can see a couple of uh, of groups of corpses around from the various different bases. Uh, but yes, we've hopped on board our tank, our now dedicated Fortin tank. Uh, now that we've got one down by Chipton as well. Because it's just better to have like a tank already there and waiting. Uh, so that you don't have to worry about bringing the tank to anywhere that needs defending. Um, and it opens up more possibilities for actually just moving around via trains. Because we can just like arrive in a train and a tank is already there and things like that. So we start attacking this base up here. And the annoying thing about the pollution at the moment is because of how little pollution absorption there is uh, from the ground and how few trees there are to absorb it as well, every time we clear away a base it just means the pollution carries on to the next one. But the hope is that eventually 
we will move far enough that we actually uh, go beyond what um, what the ground can deal with in terms of pollution. Um, and it does reduce how much gets to the bases, but when it has to go a bit further to get there, of course. Uh, but there are a few larger bases that I'm sort of avoiding for the moment. I want to deal with them when I'm a little bit more prepared, have like walls of four turrets and things like that. Or just uh, maybe leave them until I have a power suit, because maybe that's not too long off if we uh, start working on our power suit town that I guess there will be. Because um, I don't think it would be a good idea to have a separate town for each different component and things like that. We'll just have one that does all the components um, and brings all the equipment in from uh, wherever. Though I think before then we would have to get the production of uh, processing units up and running, so we'll have to do that somewhere as well. And thinking about it, I might merge that with a, a module town. I think uh, a processing unit town on its own is a, not really that much. So combining it with a module one probably makes sense, seeing as modules are particularly important for... Uh, no, not the other way around, uh, seeing as processing units are particularly important for modules. Uh, but yes, it would be nice if we could get a power suit soon and be able to deal with the uh, the bigger bases a little bit easier, at which point we wouldn't really need the tank anymore. We'd just be carrying around... Um, well, it's sort of it would be carrying us around, in a sense, um, the power suit, so that we could uh, just deal with biters uh, without any sort of uh, necessary preparation, apart from making sure we have enough ammo handy. Um, and of course, uh, destroyer drones and things like that as well, or maybe just the, the basic ones for the moment. Um, but that's another question. Will we have a separate town just for them, or will we do something else? Because, as it turns out, destroyers need quite a few um, assemblers connected up to get them working, if you want a, a good rate of destroyers. So maybe we would only have them being produced in the town. We'll, we'll work that out some other time. Uh, but yes, we're continuing to push the biters back. But the thing about leaving out the larger bases is that uh, as we take away the, the smaller bases around them, more pollution is getting to the larger base. Um, rather than being spread out uh, amongst all of them. So even though less pollution is getting to bases overall, more of it is getting to the larger ones, which could mean that their attacks are particularly hefty and are able to do more damage, because the biters are most um, most dangerous in groups, of course. When one biter attacks a turret, it can rarely get past the... Uh, uh, it can rarely, like, reach the wall before it gets taken out, but when there's a larger group, of course, um, they can, and so they can do damage, and potentially, if you're away for long enough, they can make a hole in your defences or use up the ammo and things like that, so that's uh, something to bear in mind and we should definitely not ignore these large bases. Um, and the more I think about it, the more I wonder if maybe it would be a better tactic to not take out the smaller bases if there's a large base to deal with, uh, because I feel a lot more confident about lots of small bases attacking than uh, than one big one. But anyway, we're back in Fort and we've uh, dealt with uh, some biters in the sort of the northwest and the west uh, of Fort and uh, and uh, the copper mining has made some progress. We've nearly finished the little deposit to be on the north wall, uh, so soon we'll just be able to rely entirely on the uh, on an internal mining uh, situation, which is a lot safer because there's a lot less danger of biters blowing up the um, uh, the the one turret that's out there. Though I guess it's still it's still safe for the the main town itself. Uh, but yes, I set up a new miner. But the thing is, I want to get the uh, the miners on the outer parts of the. Um, of the of the deposit done first, of course. So I end up coming up with a uh, a fiddly belt system to make sure that the um, uh, the further out ones still have priority rather than the the new ones that are uh, closer to the uh, the the output outputs the word it input for the furnaces whatever. Uh, but yes, there's a couple more bases we want to deal with before we go. Uh, there's some up in the uh, in the northeast, and there's one that's made a particular. Uh, to a particularly impressive amount of progress. It's uh, in the desert and um, probably in a position to attack Colbury again. We've had bases there before and we've dealt with them before and they just seem to keep coming back. So I decided to deal with this one up in the north as well in the hope that this might be the one that uh, that was uh, sending colonization parties to make that new base. So that if we do deal with this one, maybe we won't get uh, biters, uh, being, um, uh, biters setting up shop in between uh, Fortin and Redport, because uh, they seem to be really good at taking out the, the defences in the north of Colbury. Um, so yes, we get this one sorted uh, fairly easily, though I think, yeah, this one is a particularly risky attack, and I end up hitting a few more things than I intend to, and are getting very close to death, but I manage to uh, finish off the base without too much of a problem. So uh, then we'll go down to the one in the south, or south of where we are anyway, um, so hopefully we won't get any more attacks. Uh, on Colbury from there. Of course, I crash into one of my own turrets as I'm as I'm uh, cleaning up, having not lost any to the biters themselves. Uh, but that's fine. We'll just build another one when we get back to the main base, and we've got uh, a bit more in the way of iron. So attack this one too. This one's actually getting a fair bit into the pollution at this point because uh, 
You can sort of see it getting a lot redder down there on the on the mini map, and uh, I've I've been trying to decide what I want to do about the uh, the pollution situation because it is quite a nuisance. I made the settings not so nice for myself in certain ways, and also starting on a desert has really um, been a huge problem, and it's the entire reason that the pollution has got as far as it has, the entire reason the biters are um, so angry with me all the time. And so I do want to reduce how much we're having to deal with them, but I'm not sure exactly how to go about it, because I don't want to do my my usual thing of just switching over entirely to solar panels and efficiency modules, because that just makes the, the biters like a complete non-issue and you don't have to worry about them anymore apart from when you actually want to advance your uh, um, your territories so I'm, I'm trying to come up with ways to do it in moderation so I was thinking maybe um, only have efficiency modules in the miners or something like that or only in the miners on the um, in, in towns on the outskirts or something like that or maybe have solar but only like you can only have solar panels uh, contributing uh, less than 50% of your power, so you still have to use um, a hefty bit of steam, but it would pull the pollution back a nice bit and just give me a bit of breathing room for a while so I can expand a bit more and not have to worry about things. Meanwhile, back in Fortin, the uh, the deposit just to the north of the wall has now been finished, so we can just clear this up and go to a more sort of standard uh, mining system, and we'll also just have the biters all coming to, to one nice solid wall of uh, of continuous turrets, which should be good. And at some point we'll get this hooked up to the, the automatic delivery system as well. The main issue at the moment being the uh, the miners in the way, which we could move or we could come up with some sort of other plan. Uh, we'll work it out, but it's not particularly urgent because we can just make sure we keep them uh, all well stocked anyway. But I'll of course add in a couple of extra miners uh, on the copper deposit to make sure we have some redundancy for uh, when the other miners run out. Uh, but yes, uh, back to plans for dealing with the biters. Another possible solution is that we don't actually like reduce the pollution, we just... Uh, build a wall, uh, like four meters thick and just line it with laser turrets and standard turrets and just make it completely impenetrable and deal with things that way. And of course we'll still have to pay attention, uh, make sure that the biters aren't, uh, like, making some weak points in places, like set up a logistic system keep, to keep things running. And maybe that's the way I should go with it, just, uh, go for the, um, uh, go for the maximum pollution approach and just give up on trying to, uh, uh, to keep the biters out of range of the pollution. That's definitely an option, and if we built a a wall, it would it'd be a, a very different um, sort of uh, playthrough than I usually do with with all of the like just trying to make the, the just trying to push the biters back so that they are just never even like present in the game. Um, so yeah, that that would be an interesting thing to try. But I I don't know. I th maybe I should try that some other time, and I. Maybe I should do some efficiency. Tell me what you think in the comments, because I'm really torn on this and whether I should sort of go against my original plan. Uh, it's sort of it's because of the desert thing as well. It's sort of caused me problems, and, and maybe because it's a desert, it would make more sense to just have like a big solar field in the middle of the uh, uh, in the middle of some open plains. Uh, but anyway, we are back in the main base and uh, our sort of main junction area. Uh, and I'm starting to look at flooring. For a long time I've just ignored the flooring of the of the rails themselves, uh, and I've stopped working on roads and things for the cars, but I've decided um, that it's probably time to start working on it again. And part of the reason is that uh, there was a recent Factorial Friday fact um, showing something that would be changing in uh, 0.13. Uh, so uh, the reason I stopped with the flooring before was that uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to um, exactly, like, I wasn't sure what materials I was going to use for what. I was wanting to use stone for underneath all the rails, and I pretty much decided on that, but I wanted to use concrete for the roads. Uh, but the issue with that was that it didn't look very nice. The thing about concrete uh, relative to stone is that it doesn't uh, have diagonal edges, um, so it just ends up being a bunch of squares. So if you want to do a diagonal road, it's all zigzaggy at the sides, and it doesn't look very nice. Um, so for a while I was a bit torn on what I wanted to do with it. Um, but I did want to have concrete as the as the roads, because of course it's it's the faster one, and it makes sense to have the fastest material be the one you use for the roads. But uh, I left it for a while um, to uh, think about how I do it and how to sort out the, the whole diagonal thing. Uh, but in a recent Factorial Friday Facts, they showed that uh, in 0.13, um, the concrete will gain the diagonal properties of stone, so it'll just be the same, and we'll have uh, diagonal rows and they'll look nice. So I've decided that uh, in anticipation of that change, I will start switching the roads over 
um, so we can make use of them. And I, I, I've now got a reason to sort of carry on uh, putting them in because I know what they're going to be made of. And we might actually start uh, having uh, the roads properly set up to connect up all, all the towns again. Because like at the moment I just drive across the desert for Fortin. Um, and I, there is like a, a nice gate through at the top of Colbury that we could drive through. Though it is quite awkward, I might just have the road go outside Colbury instead. Uh, but I've run out of concrete anyway, so we'll work that out uh, later on. And we do have to keep an eye on stone, because even though we've got a, a nice big stockpile at the moment, we are burning through it quite rapidly with all this flooring we are doing. Um, and I'm not sure how much there is really left uh, in our stone quarries. I think one of them might even be finished, if I remember rightly. Um, but the one in the south, I think we just haven't visited for a while. I know it's not currently operating, but I believe that's just because uh, all the chests have filled up and stuff. Uh, which is good, so we do still have um, plenty available if we need it for something. Uh, though there's very little that we actually use uh, the stone brick for, uh, for, apart from a couple of, bit of, couple of bits of, uh, of crafting. But anyway, seeing as we still have plenty of stone bricks left, and we should have more available now that we're using uh, concrete for the... Um, for the roads, I do a bit more flooring towards Newton, uh, which at the moment is still completely unfloored. All of our more recent towns have just had their uh, their nameplates put in and nothing else. Speaking of which, the the changes to the concrete may actually cause us some issues in terms of nameplates because the uh, the edges of the letters will be rounded again, uh, quite possibly. I'm not sure if that's actually going to be the case. It depends on how the interactions between concrete and stone will work once uh, concrete changes a bit. But anyway, we're in Newton sorting out the uh, ore supply, which had run out a bit, and it also seems we need a bit more steel. Uh, but also, uh, we've come at just the right time to fix the um, the defences. As it turns out, the turrets were moments from running out of ammo, and I, uh, I didn't even realise that. I actually came over and repaired them, and then went off to sort out the ore, uh, and then there was an attack, and I went to check what was going on, and one of the turrets had actually run out, uh, and the spitter was just happily um, tearing it down bit by bit. Uh, so it's a good job I, I arrived when I did. Like a couple of minutes later, we would have lost that turret. So um, I guess at that point, I would have come over anyway because there would have been the alarm and everything. But uh, I double up the turrets and uh, get some more ammo in them, and that should be fine. And there is a base that is quite near now that we should go and uh, deal with pretty soon because it's uh, it's decently far inside the pollution range. We haven't dealt with things over in the east for a while because we did manage to successfully push all the biters beyond the pollution for a while. Um, which was nice, but uh, they've had some time now to um, to regroup and start advancing again, so uh, that's part of the reason that I came over here, uh, as well as to check on how the, the Blue Science production uh, is actually running. So, the steel production is no good at the moment. It's actually the limiting factor for the uh, the Blue Science, which is not what I was expecting. I think last time I was here when I set things up, the uh, the batteries were the, uh, the limiting factor, and I assumed it would stay that way, but apparently um, I didn't set up quite enough uh, steel production, so we'll just uh, double up the array. The only thing is that I don't have any uh, furnaces on me. Well, I have one furnace on me, which is good, because it turns out I needed it, because um, the reason I couldn't make the furnaces was because I needed stone brick, and of course I'd just use all that, all of that up to uh, to put in all the new flooring on the way to the town. Um, but luckily I did still have some, uh, some raw stone handy, which I always uh, sort of carry around for just such an emergency, uh, as well as a couple of other things that you need stone brick to craft. Like, uh, well, I guess basic furnaces that I would never use, but you never know when you might need a, a basic furnace for something. So uh, we use the one furnace we have to make all the others uh, out of the, uh, the raw stone, and uh, we get the new array in place. Uh, and uh, double up the steel production. I also decide to move the old steel production to line up with it, because keeping it all in one place is just uh, slightly more convenient and stuff. And in the, its current position, it's not actually scalable, because there's sort of some rails in the way. Um, so I, I cut the lines and let the, the system sort of run out naturally, uh, and then once everything's uh, like run out of ore, I, I can clear it all away. And it actually works out better for the um, for the belt system, because uh, we no longer need this whole awkward system to make sure that things go onto the uh, the correct side of the belt, because it just does that automatically with the, uh, the positioning uh, of the furnaces relative to any, uh, everything else. So uh, we've now doubled up the steel production, which I imagine should be enough to keep the... Um, uh, well, to, to make sure that steel isn't the, the problem for the, the Blue Science production anymore, and it will probably go back to uh, to batteries or something like that. So we'll come and check up on that in a while, but I imagine it'll take a bit of time for the system to sort of balance out again. Um, we plonk down a tank ready to attack the base over in the east, but uh, we are pretty much coming to the end and there's not really enough time to uh, do any more biter attacking. So we just hop over to uh, Flaskmere, make sure that everything's fine. There's a couple of uh, iron miners that have run out, so I... Uh, uh, put in a couple of extra ones, and I also resupply the system 
with uh, alien artifacts. So we now got like five stacks in there, which is probably enough to do all the remaining science, to be honest, uh, with all the bites we've, we've been having to deal with recently. But we'll make our way back to uh, Newtown, and whatever we do, Newtown, Newton, and whatever we do next episode, we will start it by de dealing with that with that biter base in the east. So I should say goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.